Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. The last time we saw the Cape Crusaders, they were about to become the cooked Crusaders inside a fluoroscope machine at the Atomic Energy Lab. Mad Hatter trapped them in there and threw the switch. Horror of horrors! Can it have happened at long, long last? The disastrous demise of the dynamic duo? Yesterday, flesh and blood. Now, cowled skeletons. They're wearing masks, capes, boots, and underwear, which is hilarious because we have to cover that area up even though skeletons don't have... What happened to the rest of their outfits? The Mad Hatter and his crew return to see their handiwork. Ah! Oh, what's the matter, Polly? I told you what to expect. But I didn't expect it. Why would you expect that I would expect what you told me to expect when you had to expect that I wouldn't expect it? They leave, and next we see Gordon getting a phone call that makes him go ballistic. That she had seen the... the, the skeletons of Batman and Robin. The what? The skeletons of the caped crusaders shrouded in their cowls. Hold on to me, Commissioner. Hold me close, never let me go. In a fluoroscopic cabinet where they met their maker. Don't say it. Under high voltage X-ray. Oh. 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 No. <coughs> now I have to learn how to do police work all on my own. I only got through to the academy because I had a thing going with the dean's daughter. We see the news spread to the White House. Pennsylvania 65000. Oh! No! Buckingham Palace. Trafalgar 65000. Oh! No, no, no! And the Kremlin. Bet it's over. Six. Five, oh, oh, oh. Yet. Yet. Funny how they all have such similar phone numbers. Now that I've rubbed your nose in that gag, let's get back to the lab and see what really happened. Hello, Batman. I want to thank you for your assistance, Professor Overbeck. Oh, please don't thank me. You know, if it weren't for that little thingamajig. You mean the bat x-ray deflector in my utility belt? Since that's the precise gadget we need, naturally we have one. Where does it deflect him to? You were in a closed box. I assume the doctor let you out. You know, with that extra cowl you wore under your contaminated one and the additional wardrobe you had in your Batmobile, <laughs> It never would have worked if it hadn't been for the two skeletons in your closet. At his lair, Hatter is explaining to Polly that in order to stay alive, you have to both breathe in and breathe out. She's having trouble grasping it, so he moves on to his plan. Batman put a tracking device in the pink cowl, and Hatter just had his men drown it in the water tower. When the Cape Crusader's bodies are discovered, he doesn't want anything to point to him. He's going to steal a priceless ruby from the Golden Buddha of Bergamus and replace it with the cheap replica he got from Hattie Hatfield's headdress. Cheap replica? Of course this is not the real Hatfield ruby. You mean you knew that all the time? All of the time, Polly. My entire plan was to find a ruby similar to one in the Buddha's forehead and then get rid of Batman and Robin. He's so smart. I hear he can count to ten and everything. And Skimmer come in. We're off to the Gotham Art Center. Why they? Why the art museum? It's free balloon day. I'm in. Because that's where the Buddha goes on exhibit in one hour. Now all we have to do is overpower the Royal Bergama Guard accompanying the exhibit on its world tour. And then, with the aid of my reliable ruby retriever, We'll switch rubies, and we're off and running. Now that it's time to do the big deed, Polly is getting cold feet. Hatter makes one of the most unusual speeches I think I've ever heard. Now don't go soft on me, Polly. Who made Batman and Robin famous crime fighters? Criminals, that's who. If you want to show a little respect to the departed, stay crooked. That's the least you could do. There's a certain crazy logic to that. 
It reminds me of when Penguin was running for mayor and he said he was more reliable because in pictures, he's always surrounded by police while Batman is always surrounded by criminals. At Wayne Manor, Aunt Harriet is coordinating funeral arrangements. Why? And a gigantic crowd has gathered at the gate just hanging out because they know Bruce was a friend of Batman's. Aunt Harriet is out of her mind with grief, so Bruce and Dick decide it's time to pull back the curtain. I'll explain or... Certainly try later, Commissioner. Right now, Robin and I are off to nail Mad Hatter. Who cares about that pipsqueak's inconsequential crimes? Any crime, no matter how large or small, Commissioner Gordon, is a violation of a public right and common law, and the criminal or criminals committing such an offense must be apprehended for the sake of all human morality. Uh, human morality is what made you become Batman in the first place. But we don't talk about that on this show. <laughs> Boy, that was quick, boss. But not quick enough, Jarvis. I was down at the hat check stand, checking no hats. Well, at least she can count them. And guess what I heard? What? Batman and Robin are alive. How could you have heard that? Well, I did, and it's spreading like wildfire, from the president at the airport to the satellite to every country on Earth. I'm still alive, Hatter, and I'm a-coming for you. In the Batcave, the dynamic duo are trying to figure out what might have happened to the bug they put in the cowl. The idea that the Hatter might have found it doesn't occur to them. Is that a bleep? No, that's a sonar ping. You're on the wrong frequency. It sounded more like a splash to me, Robin. Which fits. My little gadget contained an underwater bat sonar device. Since that's the precise gadget we need right now, of course it does. Holy mermaid. Now let's see if we can pinpoint the exact location. They use that to pinpoint the location not only of the water tower, but the defunct restaurant where the Hatter is holed up. Gordon calls to report the stolen ruby, and they're off to retrieve it and the Mad Hatter. They meet Polly. Where would you ever get an idea like that? From that cowl, which Mad Hatter stole from me last night. You're Batman? Holy hoodwink. Or holy naivete, take your choice. My own view is holy don't have two brain cells to rub together, but that's just me. They spot Hatter and his company climbing the water tower. That cow, which Mad Hatter apparently forgot to decontaminate, contains lethal radioactive elements. He must get medical help at once. I'm not sure she understands. Let me try. Cow, bad. Make boo-boo. I fix boo-boo, okay? Let's go, Robin. Uh, may I go with you? Yes, you can lead the way. She leads them out to the base of the water tower. Oh, Jervis isn't going to like this at all. Or is he expecting you to play coy? Then innocent. Then frightened. Then lead us to him. You mean a trap, Batman. Look at her expression, Batman. She doesn't even follow your vocabulary. They're coming up. So what? <laughs> When they get to the top of the ladder, I'll simply turn on my super instant mesmerizing device in my hat. And, uh... Any other ideas, boss? Yes, I'll throw something heavy down at them. You! We get a fight scene on the water tower, complete with music from the movie. After some fun with that, O'Hara and the cops arrive and Batman turns things over to him. Where's Commissioner Gordon? Well, he caught the girl at the bottom of the ladder. And he's taking her in to book her as an accessory. He's going to process her personally if you catch my drift. Batman replies, I don't understand. Robin says, I'll explain it to you when we get back to the Batcave. Holy multitudes! <laughs> I hope you have enough loaves and fish to feed them all. At Wayne Manor, Aunt Harriet wants to know how Bruce and Dick knew for sure Batman and Robin were alive. They hem and haw around, and Alfred says it's time to tell her the truth. It is I who told them, madam. You, Alfred? How did you know? Morty, 
the cleaning woman at the Atomic Energy Laboratory, is my cousin Egbert's wife. And Maudie has always been sadly given to, shall we say, <laughs> exaggeration. I think we can see where she gets it. Alfred does know how to spin a yarn, and I'm enjoying watching Bruce and Dick try to keep from laughing. But Professor Overbeck himself substantiated her story. Just protecting a bewildered employee, madam. So that's all it was. An idle rumor that shook the world. Not the whole world, just places with phone numbers that end in 65,000. Well, perhaps it's just as well. At least Batman and Robin, wherever they are, and whoever they are beneath those masks they wear. Almost like we've heard this speech before. Must know with what esteem they are held in the hearts of all the people on this earth. I dream of the day when all people, men, women, young, old, will unite under the banner of Batman and Robin. Batman for Emperor of Earth. Okay, maybe it's not quite that bad, but come on. The president, Lyndon Johnson in this case, was going to fly immediately from his ranch in Texas to Gotham City to... To do what? What could a president do in that instance? Offer nice words? He can do that from the ranch or from the White House. On the other hand, we saw in the movie that Batman can just call high-ranking government and military officials and get any information he wants just by saying, I'm Batman. So maybe he was chummy with the president, who knows? We've had the Cape Crusaders reported dead before and there was no reaction like this. What's different about this time? That's one of the few things that bothers me about this story. Other than that, it's a nice, typical Batman story complete with campy villain, goofy cliffhanger, and the ever-present bimbo. The Mad Hatter is an easy character to write a story around because he has two motivations, greed and revenge. You can build unlimited stories around a character like that, and this was quite a good one. We have an intricate plot to steal a valuable object in such a way that most people don't realize it was stolen. The Hatter's desire for revenge on Batman isn't a B-plot either. It's woven into the main plot brilliantly. Tetch knows if it's proven that Batman and Robin are dead, the whole city will go into mourning, most shops and other businesses will close, and it's the perfect time to commit a crime of the type he's planning. So killing the dynamic duo is integral to his plan because he needs everyone distracted by their deaths so they don't notice what he's doing. So he gets his revenge and he gets a big score at the same time. Brilliant. We've had a pretty good run lately, including both some new villains and some old favorites. Let's see if we can keep that momentum going when the Joker returns next time. Until then, I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac. Why do it right when you can do it again? Here we go. Why would you expect that I would expect what you told me to expect when you had to expect that I wouldn't expect it? They leave and the next with okay. Good grief. Can't believe I have to do that again. <laughs>